welcome back to another Star Mini Gaming YouTube video. And this is our second video in our Tactica series. And in this video, we are discussing um, screening in Age of Sigmar. Um, screening more important units such as this Lord Relictor with our Judicators. Uh, and we're going to talk about a few aspects of this. We're going to talk about for you as the defensive player using a screen, you as the offensive player um, trying to beat a screen, ways you can do that. And then um, units that fly and how they impact the attempt of screening and defeating a screen. So first we'll start with regular units that just walk. Or ride on, on their cavalry or whatever it might be. So we'll begin from the defensive player's point of view. In this situation, um, for all these scenarios, we're only going to focus on the models that are actually present in the shot. So... For the purposes of this, either everything else on the table is dead or engaged in such a way to where they are not coming into play any impact. So most of the time you might see this kind of scenario take place at the end of a game or late in a game. Um, once you know, once uh, casualties have begun to set in for both sides and really protecting your key leaders or killing your opponent's key leaders becomes crucial to winning or losing. So, for this first scenario, we have a group of 20 zombies, the squad adjudicators, and the Lord Relictor. And for the Stormcast player, they need to protect the Lord Relictor. So, if we assume that it is the Stormcast player's turn, and they are going first, so the zombie player is not yet gone for this round, let's go ahead and play out how, that, um, how you would need to approach that as a Stormcast player. So, clearly you need to move and then shoot with your Judicators. And then to best protect your Lord Relictor, you're going to want to then charge into combat and engage the 20 zombies. Obviously you're hoping that your shooting thins them out to a degree and, um, and that your combat pins them down for a little while. 20 zombies are gonna not have the easiest of time chewing through these five Judicators as they each are multi-wounds, um, the zombies have no rend, and the Judicators have the four-up armor. So the odds of you surviving a round of two of combat, round or two of combat, um, as the Judicators, like worst case scenario, you should, uh, you should last at least two to three, um, you're going to want to charge in. And the key reason for this being, despite the fact that these Judicators are not a unit we normally would like to have in close combat, the Lord Relictor is just so important to us late game, and he is such a powerful piece to have on the field that we want to protect him at all costs to ensure that we have the best chance to win the game. So one of the big reasons that we want to keep him out of combat, besides obviously preventing him from suffering wounds, is that he is a caster, right? He is he has his lightning ability that he can throw into the enemy. And in addition, if the zombies are unable to inflict more than a wound, or if they inflict an odd number of wounds on a unit that is fully healthy like this, with each model having an even amount of wounds that they can take, he can heal your units back up and help kind of keep them in the fight a little bit longer. Um, that's something that I wouldn't recommend necessarily at this level of combat with the 20 zombies, you know, whenever they pile in and they're getting all their attacks in there. Um, it's just less likely to make a difference. Now, if you're reduced to about 10 zombies or 5 zombies or so, then absolutely. That could potentially tie up the zombies forever because the statistics of them inflicting even one wound goes down by so much um, comparatively that that becomes a, a pretty good option. But in this exact scenario, we want to keep him back here able to throw those mortal wounds into whatever these Judicators are fighting. If it is the Stormcast player's turn and they are going second in that round, it's actually even better for them <laughs> because there is the opportunity to potentially go two turns in a row. And that, But the one thing is that in this scenario, you have to consider something. You can either charge in with your adjudicators, as I said, with the prior sequence, move up, shoot, and then charge in. Or you have the option of move up, shoot, and then hope you get priority so that you get to go first next turn, and then shoot and then charge in the next turn, so you actually get a second volley off. Um, obviously, the disadvantage of that is you're kind of you're kind of risking it. 
it's less of a risk if you are able to kind of position your troops at an angle, such as something along the lines of this, and then have your Lord Relictor over here, and maybe the board edges are preventing the zombies from being able to move on this closer side. They may have to, you know, travel a further distance to get around. In those kinds of situations where you're making it more difficult for your opponent, um, to where statistically they shouldn't be able to charge in from, you know, both the normal attempt to move and then rolling the two dice for the charge distance. Um, if you think that the statistics of it are good enough in your favor, that is something that you can also do um, with a little bit better odds and uh, that might make it worth doing. But typically I wouldn't recommend it. Um, shooting and moving into combat to guarantee that the opponent is pinned down is is typically your best bet so you know moving in and tying them down so that's from the stormcast perspective now if you're the zombie player and you want to beat this and you're already engaged in combat such as this the stormcast player has played this correctly you're in a tough spot because if you're playing any kind of time scenario or there's a time uh, turn limit um then you really only have one option, and this is part of why it's beneficial for the Stormcast player to engage in close combat. Your only real option is to withdraw from combat if you don't have, if you don't think you have enough time to chew through these guys. Um, is to disengage and then use your movement to move around them. And this only really works as the zombie player if you are going second during the turn round. Um... If you have gone first and you do this, then the Stormcast player will then simply charge you during his turn, and you'll be, you know, stuck in combat again for another, wasting an entire another one of your turns. So only disengage as the zombie player if you're going second and have a chance to win the priority roll to go first. And then, of course, with your free with your movement as you've peeled away, as you can still move normally, you just cannot shoot or charge this turn. You then move around the Stormcast to make your char your movement for your next turn if you win priority to go first. And then your success your successive charge. The greatest odds of actually getting in is what you want to go for. So it can be tough to beat if you're kind of on a turn turn timer, so to speak. Now let's take into account flying creatures. This terror geist is pretty scary. Uh, it's kind of in the name. <laughs> and um, if the Stormcast player, if it is their turn, clearly they're going to want to shoot and then move up to engage in the combat. Because, again, you want to protect your hero. If you are standing back here, well, you're not going to really be able to protect your hero if this big old terror guy can just fly right over you and then charge on into combat so against flying uh, opponents especially for the defensive player trying to screen getting into combat to prevent them from flying over is absolutely necessary however you do have another um, alternative option that can work with uh, even with the zombies that you can do but this is even more um kind of scenario specific if you have the board edge right here and you've basically backed your lord relictor or a piece of impassable terrain that for whatever reason things can't get on top of it or around you you can always put the lord relictor in the middle keeping every one of your other units one inch apart within the squad you can of course form a bit of a living fortification around him to where your opponent cannot physically fit the model there to get through you and um so you can escape the wrath of a flying enemy in this way as well as the defensive player uh screening your more important commander or more powerful models so that monster's gonna have to go through him um you know some monsters may have the attack range to reach him with one or two of their attacks in that case you know you can always it hope you can always either have you know a bigger squad or try your best to kind of hide the model in there 
a little bit better. Um, but at best, you'll, or at worst for you, at best for your opponent, you'll be reducing the amount of attacks that can even come in on your commander in this situation, if not completely eliminating them. Again, that's also an option. You know, whenever you have the hordes like the zombies coming, is forming this kind of protective link. Um, the only problem is that, you know, they can actually fit between the holes. <laughs> and so this is less effective against them, but against large based models that take up a lot of space, this is the best way to counter them. Um, if you also have the table edge or a piece of terrain to help you. So I hope that, uh, I hope that helps you, um, to, you know, kind of develop additional strategies for use in Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar, as I've said before, and others have, um, is a highly tactical game that there is a lot that the formations and the troop placements, uh, actually matters in terms of determining who's going to win or lose the game, um, and helping to influence the odds. And obviously you always want to put the odds in your favor. And so maneuvering during all the phases is highly critical for that. So until next time, as we continue our Tactica series, this is James and happy gaming.